Hello, everyone, and welcome to this analysis of the NASDAQ for Friday, uh, June, July 7th, 2023. My name is Reese. Um, I have already traded all that I'm going to trade today because I reached, um, as you can see, I reached a profit limit. So I cannot trade further today. I have to wait until Sunday to trade again uh, due to top steps consistency rule. Okay, so guys, uh, we're in the regular trading hours, so we're going to be on the regular trading hours on the right. As you can see, uh, price did deliver in. Um, we had talked about this, but that is a regular trading hours gap there. So, okay. So we filled in that regular trading hours gap. Uh, we even drew up a little bit higher than that. If we go on our electronic trading hours, guys, you can see that it... Um, do you remember these equal highs I talked about here? I just cut right through that. And then premium civi here, cut right through that. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are using um, trading view, it's very important that here on the right side of your chart, you click on the calendar and you can see um, all of the news events, okay? And then I just filter out all the other countries um, just to the United States and Europe, although I'll probably just yeah, I'm just going to nix that too. Um, well, actually, London session. Never mind. We will we will leave Europe in there. Um, okay. So, anyways, uh, non-farm payrolls. You expect that non-farm payroll Friday is going to be um, like a two-stage macro, like down and up, and then up and down. He's talked about how to trade non-farm payroll CPI, um, FOMC. That it's a two-stage macro. It's one direction. And then it's the next, the other direction, usually. So Michael has talked about that. Um, but in any event, guys, uh, by this point of the day, you know, if you had been long or if you had been trying to long and you caught a good long here above this liquidity target, above these highs, at this point, you should already be pretty padded out for the day. Let's get back to our regular trading hours and see what price is doing. So... We're coming down into this uh, ICT bullish order block. Let's see, um, using our standard deviation projections from that order block, what price had given us. Yeah, so you can see it was like, let's see if that was 0.75. Okay, so do you see how this order block formed and then the regular trading hours gap was exactly 0 0.75 standard deviations of this order block. That's because these markets, in my opinion, are automated. They are driven by um, mathematical models, basically. They're just mathematics, in my opinion. So sometimes you're going to see things line up and you're going to be like, damn, that's kind of crazy. Why does that work like that? Well, because I think that it's computer science, guys. I don't think that any of it's real. Like, not in the way that you think. Anyways, that's my opinion. Um, so, anyways, uh, we filled in that regular trading hours gap, and now we're trading back down into ICT bullish breaker. Sorry, not bullish breaker. Um, ICT bullish order block. At this point, I would not initiate a new trade. I don't feel like I would have enough information just from what price is doing to initiate a new trade. Uh, let's look at the 30 minute chart. I would say that the remainder of the session is probably not going too far. But guys, what I will also say is that looking at this price action, looking at how price came exactly up to make the regular trading hours gap uh, fair and efficient and is now trading back down, I would hasten to guess that those are probably in the crosshair Sunday, Monday. Um, this busy right here in the regular trading hours, that's probably in the crosshair Sunday, Monday. Um, guys, I think the NASDAQ, this is my opinion and I could be wrong, do not copy trade me, is I think that the NASDAQ, that this was the high, like a long-term high like a very long term high. Okay. Go to our daily chart and to me it seems like um, 
We're looking at the daily chart here on the NASDAQ, you can see that we have high, low, higher high. Uh, that's ICT bearish breaker. And it's a pattern that is basically um, like this is a strong push into liquidity, institutional liquidity, like big money liquidity, before they plunge. Now, why would price want to come back down like hundreds, thousands of points on the NASDAQ? Why would it want to do that coming in the next few weeks, coming in the next few months? Well, let me show you NQZ. Okay, this is the December contract. This is the back contract. There's a real liquidity void there, guys. There's a uh, BISI, and then this whole area down here is quite inefficient. So this contract will not start trading for a couple of months. Um, so you probably are not going to see the big plunge on the NASDAQ for a while. But my thinking is that in order to make the NASDAQ long-term fair and efficient, it's basically like going to do this. That's kind of like the current thinking, okay? Like, come down, make, fill in these inefficiencies, fill in this liquidity void, fill in this busy. You're probably thinking to yourself, like, what the hell is this guy looking at? Guys, it's the December contract. It's the next NASDAQ contract. You know futures contracts expire. That's, that's you know, part of the reason why the inefficiencies work. Uh, anyways, in QU. Let's go back to our front month. Let's go back to the hourly chart. Yeah, Friday on non-farm payrolls, uh, it ended up performing mostly as expected, but um, you know, obviously, obviously, you know, it was difficult. So if you go on your reg electronic trading hours with the London session. You can see that I was right. That was our low of the 24-hour banking cycle, but it really threatened that multiple times, right? So that was the low of the 24-hour banking cycle, uh, but a very dangerous low. <laughs> like They threatened it multiple times. Um, I think that in order to trade non-farm payroll Friday today profitably, it sh you should have mostly been on the long side. Uh, but that being said, let's see if we had any opportunity to take, take this move down. So number one, when you saw that the regular trading hours gap here was filled and then price was, you see how price respected it? Once we came up and filled in this regular trading hours gap and then price respected it, you could have, you know, flipped short. I'm not going to lie to you. Also, guys, let's look at our um, advanced gap theory. So let's say that this is a breakaway gap. Okay. So that looks like a breakaway gap to me. And then let's say that that is a measuring gap. So let's see how many standard deviations price moved down. Okay. There's one. Now once full standard deviation. So price's objective might be two full standard deviations, 15,236. One and a half standard deviations is right about where it is. That's also reasonable. Let's do a little bit of order block um, projection. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I would use, if I were you know, trying to see where price wanted to go right now, I would first use advanced gap theory, call that a breakaway, and I would call that a measuring, and I'd take two standard deviations lower. Let's see what three standard deviations, where that would take us. Okay. That would take us down here. That would make sense as well. I mean, that'd be a big move, but it's non-farm payrolls Friday. It looks like we are going to come down two full standard deviations. Let's see if it just gets that. Guys, wick inefficiency right there. Price appears to be coming to that first. So that would be 15,227 spot 50. So the NASDAQ appears to be interested in that. Okay. 
uh, you know, one of the things, guys, is that at this point, let's say that you did identify that was a breakaway gap, and you, I did identify that as a measuring gap, you should have already been most of your position out at one standard deviation, but at this point, you know, you're playing with house money, right? You're trailing the stop down, basically. That's two standard, full, standard uh, deviations. And it could end up moving down three uh, in the last 15 minutes of trading. Yeah, there's, there's two full standard deviations moved down. So non-farm payrolls, guys, two-stage macro. Big move up, big move down, so the price goes all of nowhere, really, for the whole day. But it's a big move up and it's a big move down. He is not. He is taught, guys, uh, the two-stage macro. There's a video. I just want to let you know, Michael Huddleston, or Inner Circle Trader, my trading guru, he has taught about the two-stage macros on economic releases, so non-farm payrolls, um, consumer price index, which is CPI, uh, FOMC. It's, a, it's usually a two-stage macro, meaning a two-stage script. We're going to drive price in one direction, drive it back in the opposite direction, and that keeps price fair and efficient through the economic release. Okay? All right. Guys, I did a little bit of long-term analysis here. We analyzed what price did on Friday. Uh, Non-farm payrolls, two-stage macro, big move up, big move down. Um, you know, it made the high. This is, this is crazy, right? Guys, what does Michael Huddleston teach? What does Michael teach? You got to really listen, guys. You got to go watch your ICT and study. What is 1330? What is that time? Guys, that's New York PM open. So the algorithm today, what it was doing was a, it was following a two-stage script. So drive us up, drive us back down. And the, the two-stage script was basically morning session up, PM session down. That way it keeps price fair and efficient, right? It's covering in all these inefficiencies because, again, I think we're looking at a long-term high being placed on the NASDAQ and going lower at this point. But I could be wrong, guys. Don't copy trade me. Um, anyways, we filled in the regular trading hours gap, so we're fair and efficient, right? Price was fair and efficient. Now we're fair and efficient back down on the downside. And the non-farm payrolls, whatever that number is, ultimately it's kind of a wash, right? Because price is fair and efficient. So um, this thing ended up moving down two. It could end up going down three standard deviations. Wick inefficiency here. At this point, I'd, I'd definitely already be out of my trade personally. Um, but as you know, uh, I already hit the profit limit here uh, with the top step, guys. So this has been an analysis of Friday uh, non-farm payrolls July 7th 2023 in this video we covered topics covered guys we covered the ICT two-stage economic release macro okay so go look that up on ICT yes he talks about it we talked about the regular trading hours gap okay we talked about long-term or daily bears breaker. We talked about the market maker buy model, guys, and why the you know the London session. I did that in the last video. Why the London session usually makes the the low for the 24-hour banking cycle. And then uh, what else did we talk about, guys? We talked about advanced gap theory. So guys, in this video, here are the models that I covered, and you need to go study these yourself. Number one, the ICT two-stage economic release ma macro. So economic release, two-stage macro, up one stage, down the second stage. We talked about the regular trading hours gap and how price uh, ended up filling that in to be fair and efficient. We talked about our longer term or daily bearish breaker and why I think that the NASDAQ has probably put in a long-term high. We talked about advanced gap theory with breakaway, so breakaway and measuring gap, plus standard deviation projections. You can see that we've moved down two and a half standard deviation projections throughout the course of this video. And those are the models that I covered, guys. Um, I hope that you all did well today. Uh, I will be back for Sunday's trading. Um, I'm probably going to make videos over the weekend, so I will see you this weekend. 
Bye. Oh, guys, quick uh, disclaimer. Not financial advice. These are all my opinions. Um, trading futures or forex involves substantial risk of loss, including more than you initially invest. Okay.